Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I'm Julie Cohen. I'm the president of the Oklahoma Arts Institute, and I want to thank you for your interest in the 2021 Summer Arts Institute. It's great to see all of you from all over the state. Um, as we go along, first of all, I want to say, please make sure that you're muted for now. We'll have a time at the end where you can ask questions, and we'll ask you to unmute at that time. Um, but if you do have questions, please feel free to type them in the chat at any time during the session, and we hope to give you, um, we'll be able to get to them later. We're giving you an overview of what we think you'll need to know, but if we don't get to your uh, question, we'll, we'll take it at the end. Um, for those who are new to the Summer Arts Institute, I just want to give you a short overview of our program. Uh, the Arts Institute is a statewide nonprofit organization. We are the state's official school of the arts. It's our goal to identify talented high school students and give them the opportunity to in intensively study and better their skills as artists. This will be our 45th Oklahoma Summer Arts Institute. So we've been doing it a long time. Um, through our audition process, which is about to begin, we identify about 270 of Oklahoma's most talented young artists um, and invite them to come to the beautiful and remote Quartz Mountain Arts and Conference Center in Southwest Oklahoma for two weeks to study with nationally renowned faculty artists in one of eight disciplines, acting, chorus, creative writing, dance, drawing and painting, film and video, orchestra, and photography. One thing that makes the Summer Arts Institute unique is that students are exposed to all of those art forms. In addition to studying intensively in your own discipline every day, you get to know students from all different disciplines and you get to participate in lectures, performances, and demonstrations in all of the other artistic disciplines. But the thing that really sets our program apart is that if you get in, you will receive a full scholarship to attend the program. The cost of the program is over $3,000 per student. That's what it costs us. But we wanna make sure that every student who's accepted is able to come regardless of finances. So you don't need to worry about finances holding you back from applying. Um, one, of the ve one very important thing I wanna make sure everyone is aware of is the fact that we have changed the dates for OSAI this year. While the program usually takes place in June, we have moved it this year to July 10th through the 25th. This is in part because Quartz Mountain's currently undergoing a full renovation, um, but in, they don't think they'll be done in June, but we also wanna give as much time as possible for people to receive the COVID vaccination prior to coming to OSAI. On that note, I know that COVID-19 is on everyone's minds and you are all wondering um, how that might impact us this summer. I do want you to know that our staff will be working in coordination with public health officials to adapt our program to ensure that we can meet in person this year. Much of that will depend on the timing of the rollout of the vaccine, but be assured that our plans will be made in accord accordance with current CDC guidelines, whatever the, they are at that time. And we'll keep everyone apprised as we move forward. Our hope is that we will know a lot more in that regard when we make our selections for the program in April. Um, please remember that auditioning is not a commitment to attend the Summer Arts Institute, and when it gets closer, we'll have more specific information about protocols and procedures, and we will send the details to selected students and their families so you can make an informed decision at that time. In the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out to our staff if you have any specific questions. So again, thank you all for being here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Emily Claude, our Vice President and Director of Programs to give you more specifics about this year's new audition process. Hi, everyone. So excited to see your faces here today. Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? All right. Um, they were doing some sort of construction across the street that was really loud right before we started. So I threw on my earbuds to make sure that you could hear me. Um, unfortunately, I'm gonna start by bursting your bubble because none of the information I have for you today is top secret. Everything I'm going to go over to you with you is accessible on our website. We've spent a lot of time ensuring the website is as comprehensive as possible. So we're going to primarily use the website as our visual aid today so you know where to find the information when you need to refer back to it. The one thing you need to know about this year's audition process is it is entirely online. There will be no in-person auditions this year. Applicants for each discipline will submit their audition materials through our online system. And the only live components are the Zoom interviews for film and video and photography applicants, which I'll talk about shortly. 
The audition material for acting, dance, film, chorus, and orchestra is a single video. For creative writing, your audition materials are writing samples submitted as a single document. For drawing and painting and photography, your audition materials are the images of your work. We're now going to look at the application. I will tell you that the application is not as easy to see and follow on a mobile device. Um, so we highly recommend you complete the application on a desktop or laptop computer. To begin your application, you'll go to apply.oaicourts.org. If you've applied for OSAI previously, you will log in with the 4x4 login and password you used previously. If this is your first time applying for OSAI, you will start by creating an account. Compared to a lot of other applications, our application is not very involved. There is no essay required, no letter of recommendation. Selections are based solely on audition scores. So the purpose of the application is just to gather some necessary information like contact info, parent or guardian info, and school info. Once you have completed all sections of your application, you will select the discipline or disciplines you are applying for. If you choose to apply for more than one discipline, you will rank them in order of your preference. If your scores qualify you for attendance in more than one discipline, your ranking will determine which discipline you are selected for. After you select your discipline and pay your audition fee, you'll see this page where you will enter your teacher information, schedule your Zoom interview, and upload your materials. Before you're able to complete the final task of uploading your audition materials, you must complete the teacher information for each discipline in which you're auditioning. And film and photography applicants, you must select a date and time to schedule your Zoom interview. Zoom interviews will end on March 9th, so there's definitely a benefit to scheduling yours as soon as possible so you have more choices of dates and times. Now let's talk about uploading your audition materials and final deadlines. Film and photo applicants, you must upload your materials at least 24 hours prior to your scheduled Zoom interview. For everyone else, your deadline to upload audition materials is Monday, March 15th at 11.59 p.m. We highly recommend that you do not wait until the last minute to upload your audition materials. The more last minute auditions we receive, the longer it will take our staff and judges to get through the scoring and selection process. Plus, we will not be available to help with questions at 10 p.m. the night before your Zoom interview or at midnight on March 15th. So, as a bit of incentive for you to complete your audition sooner than later, we will be entering the name of every applicant who submits their materials on or before Friday, March 5th, into a raffle drawing for a $50 Visa gift card. Those of you who are really on top of it and complete your audition on or before February 19th will be entered to win a $100 Visa gift card. If you're auditioning for more than one discipline, only one of your auditions must be submitted by those dates to qualify for the raffle. So if there is one bit of advice you leave here with today, let it be this, submit your audition materials early and give yourself and us peace of mind. The next part is crucial. So if you fell asleep or zoned out for a minute, listen up. Do not upload your materials until you have verified that they are the correct finished files, because once you upload them, you will not be able to see them, edit them, or remove them. For drawing and painting and photography, you have multiple files to upload, so we recommend you upload all of your images at the same time, so there is no confusion later about which ones you uploaded. When you submit your audition materials, the application portal will automatically rename the files, so you don't need to worry about naming the files in any particular way. We're now going to quickly run through a few things about each discipline, but I first want to point out that the judging criteria for scoring auditions is different for each discipline. In an effort to be as transparent about this process as possible, we give you the specific criteria at the bottom of each discipline's page, along with the definition for each criterion. So let's get started with acting. 
Acting applicants will create a single unedited video recording that should include an introduction of the two contrasting monologues, followed by the performance of the two monologues. The video recording should not be paused in between any parts of the audition. It should be one continuous take. The introduction is not a slate like you would do at a normal audition. You should not state your name or any other identifying information, only the titles of the plays, the playwrights, and the characters you will be performing. The introduction should take no more than 20 seconds, and the combined length of both monologues should be no more than two minutes, but the monologues do not have to be the same length. There is a lot more important information on the acting page of the website, including guidance for selecting your monologues, requirements for the video recording, helpful tips, and judging criteria. Let's move on to chorus. Chorus applicants will create a single unedited video recording of two pieces of music. Your choice of either America the Beautiful, Green Sleeves, or Oh Danny Boy, and Ja il sole dal gange, the required Italian art song. All of the sheet music you need is on the chorus page of our website. The video recording should not be paused in between any parts of the audition. It should be one continuous take. Your audio will be extracted from this file before we send it to the judges, so you don't need to worry about what you're wearing. All the information you need, including sheet music, Italian pronunciation resources, recording tips and judging criteria is on our website. Let's move on to creative writing. Applicants will select up to five pages of previously written work to submit for their audition. This can be any combination of poetry, prose, or personal essay. In addition to this, you will create an original piece of writing for this audition that includes the following three elements, rain, a fruit or vegetable, and a color of your choice. The audition piece must be no more than three pages long. All pages must be put into a single document and uploaded as one file. In total, there should be no more than eight pages of writing. All the information you need, including writing submission requirements, audition tips, and judging criteria are on the creative writing page of our website. Let's go to dance. Dance applicants will create a video recording of the required ballet combinations, modern dance combinations, and, and 30 second solos. A video of the combination is linked on our website as well as recommended music tracks for the combinations. Guidelines for the solos can also be found on the dance page of the website along with the required audio track for the solos. Be sure to read about audition attire, video recording guidelines and tips, and judging criteria before making your video. Drawing and painting. Drawing and painting applicants will submit images of up to four pieces of artwork and a description of work form, which can be found on the drawing and painting page of our website. You must choose no more than three portfolio pieces to submit, and your visual artwork can be two-dimensional or three-dimensional, but no larger than 18 by 24. You will also create and draw a still life. There are specific instructions on our website for creating the still life and drawing the still life, so you'll want to read through those carefully. Like your portfolio pieces, the still life drawing must be photographed and uploaded, but the still life drawing does not need to be included in your description of work. The description of work is just for your portfolio pieces that you've created previously. Check out the website for more information about selecting portfolio pieces, tips for photographing your artwork, and judging criteria. Film and video. Film and video applicants will submit a video no more than five minutes in length and participate in a Zoom interview to discuss your video submission. The website includes video submission guidelines, what to expect during your Zoom interview, and judging criteria. Please be sure to read the guidelines carefully. Orchestra. Orchestra applicants will create a single unedited video recording of three pieces of music. For most instruments, this is a scale, a one minute solo of your choosing and a required excerpt. The harp, 
and percussion requirements are a little different, but there are links to each instrument on the orchestra page of the website so you can read the specific requirements for your instrument. The video recording should not be paused. In between any parts of the audition, it should be one continuous take. Like chorus, the audio will be extracted from the orchestra applicants' files before we send them to the judges, so you don't need to worry about what you're wearing. You'll find recording tips and judging criteria on the orchestra page as well. Photography. Photography applicants will submit six to eight images and participate in a Zoom interview to discuss your portfolio. The website includes requirements for your photographs, what to expect during your Zoom interview, tips for selecting your photographs, and judging criteria. Please be sure to read the guidelines carefully. Now let's talk about the selection process. With acting and dance, the judges must see each applicant in order to score them, obviously. But they have no other information about each applicant. They don't know your name, your age, where you're from, etc. You will be scored solely on what they see in the video. For film and photography applicants, you will meet with an interviewer via Zoom who will look at your work and talk to you about things like your experience, inspiration, and process. The film and video interviewer will not assign a score. They are only there to gather information to help inform the judges who will score your film submission later. For photography, the interviewer will talk to you about your work and score you on your basic understanding of how the camera works in manual mode, but they will not score your portfolio. Your photos will be judged separately at a later date. All other disciplines are totally blind. In other words, the judges will not know who created the work, how old you are, where you live, etc. For chorus and orchestra applicants, as I mentioned earlier, we will be extracting audio and only extracting and only sending the audio from your video recordings to the judges so the judges will not see you they will only hear the pieces you perform each discipline has three judges who are educators and professional artists once auditions are complete each judge will receive the audition materials and enter their scores based on the criteria we have given them again listed at the bottom of each discipline's page on our website All of the necessary details for your audition can be found on the discipline specific page of our website and I highly encourage you to read the frequently asked questions page of our website. We don't have time to go through all of the questions today, but I do want to take a moment to talk about audition fees. Let me preface this by saying that we never want finances to be a deterrent to anyone auditioning for or participating in our program. These fees help us cover expenses related to the audition process. We have resources, however, to help families who have financial need. We charge $20 to apply for OSAI. If you choose to audition for multiple disciplines, you will be charged $15 for each additional discipline. If your family is experiencing economic hardship, however, there is a link to request financial assistance at the bottom of the payment page of the application. Our mission is to provide exceptional multidisciplinary arts experiences for talented Oklahoma youth, regardless of financial means. Please do not let cost drive your decision to audition. Many students qualify to have all of their OSAI costs covered, so please utilize the financial assistance if you need it. Before we take questions, we have one more opportunity for you to win some cash, specifically cash to help cover your audition fee. On our Instagram at OAI Courts, we shared this post about auditions today. For a chance to win a $20 audition fee waiver, follow our account, like this post, and tag a friend or more in the comments. Um, and I think we've posted the link in our chat. If you share this post to your own Instagram feed or to your story, you will receive one extra entry. We want to get the word out to as many students as we can, so please tag your friends who love the arts as much as you do. Tag your friends who you want to be at Quartz Mountain with you this summer. We will give away a total of five audition vouchers and the winners will be notified this Thursday, January 28th around noon. If your name is drawn, but you've already submitted your auditions and paid your fee, good for you. You will receive a refund if you win. 
All right, we're going to open it up to questions. Emily, we had one, a couple of questions that came in um, on the Zoom registration that were about what to do after you're accepted. The main one was about what kind of supplies and packing lists do we need to bring? Um, so if you could talk about that and how. Sure. Yep, so um, after the selection process is complete, every student who applies for the program will receive a notification, whether they were selected, not selected, or selected as an alternate. Um, we then ask selected students to confirm their plans to attend. Um, so once we've received confirmation from all 270 students and or accepted alternates for those students that can't attend, that were given an invitation, um, then we send out specific details um, to those students and their families, including a handbook, um, which goes over a lot of details about this summer. There will be a lot of changes, of course, because of COVID-19 this summer to our protocols and procedures. We're going to outline all that information um, for attending students. Um, and in that information, um, you will receive details about discipline-specific supplies, as well as general camp supplies, general things that you will need um, to have a positive experience this summer. Any important information we send out, we send to both parents and students so that you're both in the loop about what, what you need to prepare before the Summer Arts Institute begins. And you'll have plenty of notice to do that. We have a question from Kendra about when the fee is due. I'm assuming she means the audition fee. The audition fee is due at the time that you schedule, well, I should say not schedule your audition, um, at the time that you apply. So you complete the application process online, um, you select your disciplines that you want to apply for, and then you'll pay your audition fee based on how many uh, um, disciplines you've chosen to, to apply for. Any other questions from the chat, Maggie? Yeah, Sarah has a question. Um, are there going to be less students accepted this year because of COVID-19 or because of social distancing orders? Um, we are planning to select 270 students this summer. Um, if we have to make changes to those numbers because of CDC guidelines, we will inform you of that. Um, anything else you wanna to add to that, Julie? No, just that we're going to do our best to make sure we can accommodate 270 students and that might entail looking for ways to spread out a little more than we can um, at Quartz Mountain if that's looking for some annex spaces or or um, even if we had to move it, we're going to do that because we want to make sure we can be in person and that you can we can accept the same number of students. Georgia had a question, I believe. She raised her hand. Georgia, if you want to unmute yourself and ask. Hi, uh, I was a student uh, during this year's virtual uh, film and video class, and I was wondering if it was still ac acceptable to submit the works that we worked on during that time into uh, the auditions, because they said that they were accepting, uh, I know that on real, real website, you said that you were accepting the works that we did during the, that time, um, but are you yeah, still? The, um, the only work that we don't allow to be submitted for OSAI auditions is work created at Quartz Mountain um, and, and work that was created a long time ago. We want it to be recent work um, since March of last year is our deadline, and we want it to be work that you did not create at Quartz Mountain or during OSAI in June. Um, so that qualifies Georgia. The, the work that you created during the Academy is just fine for you to submit. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of questions in the chat about what things might be different because of the COVID-19 and what specific precautions um, that we would be taking at Quartz Mountain. Julie, you want to talk about that? Sure. Um, I mean, we don't want to be guessing too much about what it's going to look like but I will guess that it's unlikely that um, high school students are gonna be receiving the vaccine in time for July. So um, our, our plan is to um, follow CDC distancing guidelines. That may mean mask wearing. Um, it probably will mean mask wearing if we're not all vaccinated. 
we may have a testing program. We're in discussions with a couple different um, organizations who might be able to provide testing for us. It may mean um, uh, uh, that visits to campus or off campus are gonna be, um, because of the testing, more limited, um, or we won't be able to have visitors on campus. Um, but the nice thing about our community is we are a, an enclosed community of sorts. And as you those know who have visited before, we have a security gate typically, and others are not allowed to come into the campus while we're there. Um, but that gives us the opportunity maybe to create an environment where we could um, test and um, and not worry about people leaving and bringing it back. So it just it's going to take a lot of planning and a lot of discussions with public health experts, and we don't want to start doing that until we know we need to get a couple months down the road to get a better feel for what it's going to look like. So. Um, rest assured, we will be keeping everyone informed about those decisions, but um, we really feel like we can do it. So. Thanks, Julie. We've got a question from Grace about um, around what time she should apply for the audition. Um, I think she means like, should she start the application as soon as she's um, off of the Zoom call or should she wait until she's about ready um, with her final audition material submissions for uploading? Um, photography and, and drawing and painting applicants, we encourage you, as I said, to upload all of your materials at the same time. Um, but the application process doesn't have to happen at the same time that you upload your materials. So you can fill out the application, complete the application, pay your audition fee, get that part of it done, work on your audition materials, and then come back and upload those. That's the nice thing about being able to log in with your four by four and password. You can start the application process anytime. You don't even need to, to complete the application process. It will tell you what you haven't completed yet, uh, but you can at least start it. And I think you'll find that the information is probably stuff that you already have in your head and pretty easy to complete pretty quickly. Um, so fill out the application, at least get it started. Um, the deadline is, is for the application, the audition materials, all of it. Everything needs to be completed um, for everybody at set film and photo by March 15th at 11.59 p.m. Film and photo, as I said, those applicants need to submit their, their, um, their audition materials at least 24 hours before their scheduled Zoom interview. And the final Zoom interviews are March 9th. So your deadline is definitely earlier than everybody else. So you'll wanna get started on that soon. But again, the sooner you upload those audition materials, the better. Um, it, it definitely helps our staff um, because it's going to take a lot of facilitation on the back end. Once all of the, the materials are submitted, there's some work that we have to do before we get that submitted to the judges, like extracting the audio from those um, orchestra and chorus videos, um, you know, making sure that, that they're all named correctly so that you remain anonymous when the judges get the files. Um, all of those things will help us to get a head start on that if you can if you can upload those materials earlier. We've got a couple of really good questions about how OSAI might impact um, a student's future. Specifically, is OSAI going to make them eligible for a college scholarship? And the other question is more general: um, In what way is this going to affect my my future? Hey, Emily, I already yeah. responded directly to one of those, sure. so yeah. I, I can take it. Um, now, as far as the scholar college scholarship, I can't speak to that. It's going to depend on the scholarship and what their requirements are. I will say I've watched a lot of students apply to colleges, and um, it definitely is a great thing to have on your college resume. Um, when you, especially if you do the Common App, you'll be asked to rank your top um, activities and they want to know how much time you spent in each activity so that it's not just something you did for an hour one day, that kind of thing. So they just want to see dedication towards something of interest to you. And I think this kind of intensive experience, coupled with the fact that it's extremely um, competitive, <laughs> so it shows, you know, success on your part as an artist, I think it definitely can be very helpful on your college um, application. I'd also say that one of the more intangible benefits, though, is that when you go to Quartz Mountain, you get to meet students from all over the state and um, counselors who are, you know, usually 
artists in their 20s, and then um, faculty from all over the country. And those are relationships that last a lifetime for many people. Um, I know people, students who went 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they're still in contact with their faculty. And there, some people would say the friends they made at Quartz Mountain are still their closest friends into adulthood. And it's because you find people who have similar interests to you. So um, if you have a, a real interest in being a filmmaker, those are gonna be people you work with for years and years. Um, and to me, that is one of the biggest benefits of this experience. Emily, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. I mean, it's one of the benefits of having a program that's been around for 43 years, almost 44 years, is that we have seen the impact of what this program does and it changes lives. Um, and that's the reason our program has been so successful and is still thriving. Uh, despite a pandemic, um, because the state of Oklahoma supports this program and knows that it has an enormous lasting impact on every student that has the opportunity to attend. Um, and it's uh, it's really rewarding for everybody that gets to be a part of it. Um, faculty, students, counselors. Um, it's an incredible community that we build, whether it's in person or online, we discovered last summer. Um, that that does last a lifetime and it stays with you. Our goal is really to to encourage students um, to pursue the arts, to challenge them to grow during these two weeks. And we are always just amazed at what you're able to accomplish in such a short period of time. Um, it's it's why I've been working for the Arts Institute for 15 years, because um, it's just as rewarding for me, I think, as it is for the students who get to be a part of it. Any other questions, Maggie, from the Yeah, chat? we've got a couple of questions about transportation and whether um, accepted students will be responsible for their own transportation to Quartz Mountain or if OAI can help facilitate that for students who might need it. Absolutely. Um, so if you're selected for the program and you need help getting to Quartz Mountain, please contact us. Um, we are happy to help arrange transportation for you. Most students that come to Quartz Mountain um, arrange their own transportation. Either their parents bring them, they get a ride from a friend. Um, we don't automatically uh, arrange transportation, but we're happy to help with that if you need help. Um, and we can, we can work on that with you if you're selected. So please reach out to us if you need that. We've got a specific question about chorus auditions. Colors wants to know if there is a sight reading portion for choir auditions this year. No sight reading. How many course applicants are excited about no sight reading? Yeah. Um, we just couldn't figure out a way to, to successfully facilitate sight reading in an online format. Um, that's where the Italian art song comes in um, to try to assess a little bit of a different technical skill. Um, but our hope is to reincorporate sight reading in the future when we can, when we can be back in person. So course students, um, please keep working on that site reading because you probably will need it again for future OSAI auditions. And for those mm -hmm. asking, there's also no site reading in orchestra either this year. Pam has a question about orchestra auditions. Um, she wants to know if she can record her video as many times as she wants before she submits it. She knows oh, that she yeah. needs to keep it unedited, but can she go and go until she gets a recording? She's happy. Take advantage of this opportunity. Do it as many times as you need to before you get it right. Do it. Practice. And listen to it before you submit it. Make sure it sounds okay. Um, take advantage of this opportunity to practice because you don't get that in a live audition. Um, so yes, but you do need to make sure that the final recording that you make is one continuous take. You cannot pause the recording in between parts of the audition. It should be one continuous video recording, non-edited. I'll just take the opportunity to, to say the same thing for chorus. Um, it needs to be one single take as well as acting it needs to be one single take. And so take advantage of the practice time that you'll get and do as many practice takes as you need and submit the one you love the most. Dancers, you um, are able to splice your combinations and your um, solos together. So those can be multiple takes spliced into a single video. Um, we've got a question from Jill. 
she's wondering how many applicants in total we normally have applied to attend OSAI. We always say nearly um, a thousand applications. That is not applicants, that is applications. So that is many applicants apply for multiple disciplines. Um, that's taking those into account. Um, we haven't gotten quite to a thousand the last few years, um, but we select 270, um, around 270 every summer. And, um, and so it is very competitive. And the majority of applicants who apply for our program do not get in the first time they audition. So if you're auditioning for the first time this year, please don't be discouraged if you don't get in. Um, if you talk to an alum who's been to Quartz Mountain before, they will tell you they didn't get in, most likely the first time they auditioned. Um, but I always encourage applicants to audition the first opportunity they can because the more experience they have auditioning, the better they're going to get at it, the more comfortable they're going to become with this process. Um, so even though it's competitive, it's difficult to get in, um, give it a shot. It can only benefit you in the long run. Um, but, but it's good to have reasonable expectations going into it too. And keep trying, keep trying. We've got a question from Kendra specifically about acting. She wants to make sure she understands correctly that um, the audition video should be two minutes for the monologues and a 20 second introduction. Can you just briefly go over that once more? Yeah. So the introduction, again, we don't want any identifying information in the introduction. It's just introducing your monologues. You'll say, um, I'm going to be performing from this character, from this play, written by this playwright. And then you'll go right into your first monologue. Again, not pausing in between those parts. You'll start your first monologue. As soon as you're finished with your first monologue, you'll start your second monologue. No pausing in between. The combined total of both monologues should be two minutes. And we estimate that the introduction, just saying what the monologues will be, no more than 20 seconds, probably a lot less than that. But we're not timing the introduction. We're timing the actual monologues, which should be no more than two minutes. Kenneth has got a question specifically about um, film and video and photography. And besides his question, we don't have very many um, others that are in the chat, unless somebody wants to throw a last minute one up there. Um, so just to answer Kenneth's question quickly, everything is on the website and we'll make this video recording available too. So for film and video and photography, you can rewatch the Zoom and um, we'll make it available on the website. Maggie Wall's question, Emily, is um, about whether or not we know who our 2021 conductor will be. Oh, man, I wish I knew. <laughs> uh, we do not have a confirmed um, chorus conductor yet, but you can bet as soon as we do, it will be up on our website. And one last question from Clayton. He wants to know if the judges um, will just be listening to the audio during the acting audition. No. The judges definitely need to see the actors to be able to score them accurately. Um, same with dance. Obviously, they need, they need to see that. I shouldn't have to say that. Um, but they will need to see them. So those are technically not blind and that they have to watch the applicants in order to score them. But they won't have any other identifying information about you. Um, but that does remind me about the acting auditions. We do encourage you to, to video record the two monologues from different perspectives. So one should be close up to the camera so they can see your facial expressions really well. The other should be farther away, more of a wide shot so that they can see your body movements. Um, it just gives them a better, because they can't be there with you live in the room, it gives them a better perspective on, on what your abilities are. Um, so choose carefully, you know, which monologue you really want them to see your facial expressions really well and make sure that that one is a little closer up. And the one that has maybe more body movements that goes along with it, you'll want to make sure you have a wide shot. So it's just a matter of moving back. Again, you're not pausing the recording. You're just moving back away from the camera a little bit for the, the monologue that you want to get the wide shot for. You shouldn't be adjusting your camera. Emma has a question about orchestra. Um, her question is, the solo is supposed to be one minute long, but would it be okay for it to be slightly over since it is in one video? I'm sorry, I was reading a question. Um, I, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna have you re, re, read that question to me, Maggie, and then I'm gonna answer another one that I saw here in just a second, sorry. Happy to. Emma's question is about the orchestra solo. Um, it's supposed to be one minute long per the website. Um, 
would it be okay for that solo to be slightly over since it's in one continuous take? No, the solo should really be under one minute. Um, again, if we start to kind of uh, futz with those numbers a little bit, it's hard to know where to stop. So um, we're treating this audition as similarly as we do our live in-person auditions. You would be stopped at one minute if you went over. So we really want that, that solo to, to be shorter than a minute. Um, and also out of respect for the judges that have to listen to hundreds of uh, audition recordings. Please make sure that solo is under one minute. Um, I did see a question about the acting instructor this summer. Dean Irby um, is our acting instructor this summer. He is confirmed um, and he's taught for us two years in the past, maybe three, I think just two. Um, he's awesome. We don't have any of his bio or photo yet, which is why he's not on the website, but he is confirmed and um, prospective acting students, you're gonna love working with him. He's awesome. Hey, Emily, I'm going to chime in. One, I'm going to say Dean is one of my favorite acting instructors we've ever had. That's a side note. So um, he's great. Um, but I was going to just clarify on the orchestra solo, it can't exceed a minute, but it doesn't mean you have to choose a piece that is only a minute or less long. So you can just choose where you want it to end ahead of time and just time it, make sure you know it's going to end there and go ahead and end it even if you're not finished with the piece. And I don't know if, Alyssa, you want to add anything to that, our music coordinator, or does that sound? Nope, that sounds about right. Just making sure that it it's a cut that is within a minute. So it doesn't have to be a solo. It can be like an etude or an orchestral excerpt or something like that. Um, but yeah, just make sure that, that whatever selection you, you pick is a minute. And if you do have long rests, like multiple measures of rest, you can kind of skip through those multiple measures of rest and condense those. It doesn't have to be a full minute either. So if there is a, a really obvious place to stop, pick that obvious place instead of stopping like in the middle of a measure or something, um, even if it's a little bit under a minute. Georgia has a question about housing on campus. She wants to know what housing is gonna look like at Quartz Mountain, um, how many to a room, that kind of thing. Julie, you wanna talk about that? Um, housing at Quartz Mountain is in the hotel. Students are in um, cabins and in the dorm. There's a dormitory that fits 16 per area and then hotel rooms. Um, at, right now, we don't know what housing is going to look like because of COVID. So we are not going to, if, if we cannot get everyone vaccinated and we're going to be distancing, we're obviously going to choose housing a housing arrangement um, that's more distanced, maybe at most have two people sharing a room um, with testing and other precautions. So I can't speak to that yet and we'll have a lot more information as we get closer. Got a question from a pianist. She wants to know if there's anything available for piano at Quartz Mountain, either as a discipline or if there's just practice pianos around campus that she might be able to practice on. Unfortunately, we do not select student pianists for the Summer Arts Institute. We do have to hire some professional pianists to play with the orchestra and the choir. Um, we do have pianos on campus. We have several, um, and there are a couple in public locations that when classes are not happening, when rehearsals are not in session, you are welcome to use them to practice. We've got a really good question. It's specifically about drawing painting, but it applies to every discipline. Um, the question is about whether we'll be told what their audition scores are. Um, unfortunately, we don't um, release scores um, for auditions. Uh, all of that information is um, is is confidential. Um, we try to make the process again as transparent as possible as far as you know what the judges are looking for, um, but we don't release those scores um, because, as you would guess, uh, the arts are subjective, um, and if we if we opened up that door, um, it would be difficult to know where to close that door. So um, so we don't release those scores, unfortunately. Um, but if you don't get the, the selection status that you're hoping for, um, don't hesitate to contact our office. Um, I am happy to give you whatever feedback I'm able to give you um, at that time. 
Got a question from a musician. She wants to know if there are practice rooms available for orchestra students. Um, if so, would she be able to reserve a spot for a practice room ahead of time? Um, we don't typically do reservations for practice rooms. There are certain times that they're available. Um, certain times of the day, you can also use your sectional rehearsal space or your housing area. Um, if it's a time that, you know, students aren't sleeping and you're not supposed to be in class. Um, there are places that you can go on campus to rehearse um, or to practice. Um, and there are some of those open spaces that you can use during those designated times. Um, we do wanna make sure that you have the time and the space to be able to practice when you need to. Um, but I will say one of the things about Quartz Mountain that makes it unique and sometimes challenging is that there aren't um, the practice rooms and rehearsal spaces um, that you might be accustomed to in your school. So we use a lot of different spaces at Quartz Mountain as, as practice rooms and rehearsal spaces and often they're used for multiple different things, different purposes. So, um, so they're not always available, but we do want to make sure that you have the space and the time to do that when you can. We've got a question from a dancer. Um, are there any moves in dance that are required in the audition? And should it be in ballet, modern jazz, and is point required? Uh, point is not required. Um, there are specific combinations that you have to learn and perform in your audition video. And that is one single video on our website that, that goes through the instructions of learning those ballet and modern dance combinations. Jazz is not a part of our program, although it could be incorporated into the program in the summer. Our program is primarily ballet and modern dance, which is what the audition consists of. Um, point work will be incorporated into the curriculum in the summer if you have been on point previously, if you've had a certain amount of experience, um, but it is not a part of the audition process. We've got a question from an orchestra student, but I think it is something that could apply to each discipline too, Emily. Um, Elizabeth wants to know what a typical day at Quartz Mountain looks like for an orchestra student. For an orchestra student, it is busy. It is very full and busy. Um, for every student, it's intense. Um, you're in class five to six hours a day. So you get up in the morning, you have breakfast, hopefully, um, and you go to class for a few hours, then you go to lunch, and um, you hang out in the courtyard probably and hang out with your friends and then you go to class in the afternoon and after your afternoon class you'll go to dinner um, and then in the evening we have faculty presentations and performances um, we all spend time together in the evening in the performing arts center it's one of the ways that we give you exposure to other disciplines outside your own it's an opportunity for you to learn more about the incredible nationally renowned faculty that we have at Quartz Mountain. You get to see their work. Um, you get to hear our musicians perform our, our music faculty. Um, and then toward the end of camp, you start to see student performances as well, student showcases. Um, we have a lot of electives and fun activities built into the schedule as well. Um, we have exercise classes typically um, that take place in the mornings and in the afternoons, if you are interested in that. Um, sometimes we have guided meditations. Um, we have early morning hikes so that you can explore the natural um, part of Quartz Mountain. Um, we have student dances, we have karaoke, um, open mic night, um, electives, really great workshops that you can take like screen printing. Um, all kinds of fun things. We try to keep you as busy as possible um, while you're at Quartz Mountain because two weeks goes by really fast. We've got a couple of questions about voice and music. Um, Kyle, the first answer to your one of your questions is that we don't quite have a choral director available, um, but their bio will be, will be listed on the website as soon as we know who that is. The second question, Emily, is how much music theory is covered in the music disciplines? I'm going to let Alyssa answer that question. Alyssa? Um, yes. <laughs> um, we don't have a specific theory class like you would typically see in your 
um, like a college or high school class that's specifically theory. Um, but a lot of the sectionals, uh, sectional times are kind of up to the instructors, but they can cover a wide range of topics. Um, so that can include some kind of theory, RL skills, something like that, that's um, more geared towards the overall musicianship of the students. Um, but no, we don't have a, a very specific theory class. It seems like our questions have slowed down in the chat, Emily. It seems like it might be a good time to wrap up. Sure. Thank you all. I'm sorry, Maggie, I'm just gonna interject. Maybe someone responded, I'm sorry if I missed it. I did see a question go by about drawing and painting. Did you see that Maggie or has someone responded to it? And what kind of pencil do you use? I believe, oh, Carson, life. I believe Carson directly responded to that student, but- I'm sorry. Question. Maybe good for everybody else to hear. So yeah. um, the still life, as I said, we have very specific instructions on the website for creating that still life, for setting up that still life in your home or school. There are specific elements that have to be included in that still life. When you're ready to draw the still life, we also have very specific instructions for drawing the still life. The materials you use are things that you should already have at home unlined eight and a half by 11 paper and a number two pencil is all you need. And everybody needs to use the same materials. Um, so make sure that you're using a number two pencil, eight and a half by 11 paper for that still life drawing. So Carson, what was the answer to the question here asked if it's a number two HB pencil or can they use the range from 6B to 6H? So I told Addison to email me directly so that I could look up those different pencils. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if, I don't know enough about the specific pencils to know if you can have a number two 6B and a number two 6H. I don't know if those are all considered number two or not. So I'm going to have to look that one up and get back to that. So maybe we can clarify it on the website too a little bit. So if anyone else is wondering, we will have more information about that as well. Please remember that we are here to help. The purpose of this new format is to make the audition process safer and simpler. So if there's anything we can do to help make your application and audition experience easier, easier or more pleasant, please do not hesitate to call, email, or message us on social media with any questions. Again, thank you for your interest in the Oklahoma Summer Arts Institute. Good luck, and we hope to see you 